September and October of 1944 were relatively quiet months for the 5th Air Force in the South Pacific. The Americans had driven the Japanese northwest for 3,000 miles in the early bloody days on Guadalcanal. Up the long parallel track from the Solomon Islands, and then all the way across the huge island nation of New Guinea, they had met and bested the cream of the Japanese war machine from Henderson Field to Borneo, finally establishing themselves at a tiny airstrip on the island of Morotai, what is now Indonesia. The Japanese had fled or retreated into bypassed, lonely outposts, and the few remaining Japanese aircraft had been avoiding the Americans. Air action had almost completely ended in the area, and the aces were hungry for more. Meanwhile, 650 miles farther north, MacArthur's army had joined up with the U.S. Navy and invaded the Philippines in a tremendous battle at Leyte Gulf where the Japanese were entrenched with more than 400 aircraft. The air action was at Leyte, and the Americans there needed help. Thousands of American troops had landed at the northwest corner of Leyte Gulf, and were working furiously to carve two workable airstrips from the mud and sand near the beaches, while under almost constant fire from nearby troops and bombardment from land-based Japanese planes based at nearby fields. Major Tommy McGuire's 475th Fighter Group had expected to establish the first new American air base in the Philippines, but the primitive airstrip built for them at Dulog, near the entrance to Leyte Gulf, was not ready, and the 475th Fighter Pilots sat glum and disappointed as they watched the 49th Fighter Group, led by America's ace of aces, Major Dick Vaughn, Depart from Morotai on the 27th of October, headed for a swampy, muddy new field to be known as Taklaban, the extreme northwest corner of Leyte Gulf. The action was at Leyte. Bong and his group immediately found themselves at the center of a hornet's nest, swirling with Japanese aircraft. Outnumbered 20 to 1, the land-based American aircraft in the Philippines quickly established themselves as competent hunters in a target-rich environment, but the pace was draining on them, and many of their aircraft were damaged or worn out within a few days. On November 1st, word came down that McGuire's base at Dulog could not be completed anytime soon, and that their planes were needed as replacements at Tacloban, where the pilots were expected to surrender them to the 49th Fighter Group, then to stand by. Well, at least they thought they would be back in the action. McGuire could feel opportunity. He knew that as a squadron commander, he would be permitted to keep his airplane, and that he would be allowed to fly combat with his old buddies from the 49th Fighter Group. As the second leading ace in the U.S. Air Force, he hoped the target-rich situation would allow him to keep up with, or maybe even overtake, Dick Vaughn, in the race to end the war as America's top ace. But McGuire also knew his responsibility to develop and protect his squadron, which had recently seen an influx of inexperienced new pilots. He made sure his airplane's gas tanks got the full measure of fuel prior to takeoff, and he used his best fuel conservation skills during the long flight to Tacloban in order to ensure enough for combat in the area just in case the enemy was present in the landing zone. In this mission, you will fly as McGuire, leading the 475th Fighter Squadron, Satan's Angels, from Morotai into Takloban Field on the morning of November 1st, 1944. There's no need to maintain radio silence as the Japanese have observers and radar equipment all over the Philippines, and they will definitely know of your arrival. As your squadron enters Leyte Gulf, help them become oriented to the area, which will be their new home for the next few weeks. And it will be important for them to learn to find the airstrip day or night in all kinds of weather, and even if they are wounded or flying a damaged plane. As they descend to land, you should remain aloft above them with your guns armed, watching for enemy aircraft and protecting the less experienced pilots during the vulnerable period of their landing. Warn your pilots that this strip is very primitive. The runway panels are sitting in deep mud, 
and they often tip and shift and submerge under stress. Near the center of the field, off to one side, they will see a boneyard of destroyed American aircraft that have resulted from runway accidents and skids in the mud. Navy and Army pilots report that the middle of the field is especially treacherous, and they recommend trying to land as close to the ends of the strip as possible, coming to a full stop well before the center of the strip. Good luck, and welcome to the Philippine Islands. You are back in the thick of the action now.